Hi, everyone. I wanted to share with you a helpful tool that can be used to help you identify animals in the deep sea. This tool is the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute's or MBARI's Deep Sea Guide. You can access the website by entering the address dsg.ambari.org into a web browser um, or just searching, um, you know, in Google. Uh, Ambari has conducted thousands of research expeditions over the last 30 years, and the underwater remotely operated vehicles or ROVs record everything that they see in the deep sea. Professionals in the Ambari's video lab go through videos and mark or annotate these videos to highlight uh, interesting observations like sightings of animals or instruments that are being used. The Video Annotation and Reference System, or VARS, is the database that stores all of this information, which includes animals, other objects, and the depth, time, and location of the observation. The Deep Sea Guide is therefore an online record of these observations. And so when you get to the home page, I want to draw your attention to the About section. And in the About section, what you'll learn is that the data in the Deep Sea Guide are from the video data collected by Ambari's remotely operated vehicles um, for the past 30 years. Uh, the data in the Deep Sea Guide are a subset of data that can be found in Ambari's Video Annotation and Reference System Database, or VARS. Uh, the Deep Sea Guide enables visualization of VARS data, which includes imagery, depth, and locations of annotated concepts that are organized in a concept tree or knowledge base. And data is published to the Deep Sea Guide monthly and excludes embargoed observations that are still undergoing review and analysis. And Ambari provides these data as is. Another item that's worth looking over is the data use policy. And here there's instructions about how the data can be used for educational and research purposes, as well as instructions on how images and video can be used for these and media or commercial purposes. But coming back to the home page, um, you'll notice like a very obvious mistake, unmistakable uh, search bar. And as you type a word or concept into the search bar, let's start with this. Um, you'll notice that a bunch of terms will pop up. Um, and so these autofilled terms are concepts known to the VARS database and are selected from a concept tree or knowledge base. And to find out what these concepts are, both living and non-living, you can browse the concept tree by navigating to Browse Taxonomy. And so here you'll see a list of terms in the knowledge base where the arrows indicate additional terms that descend from the higher term, much like file names in a folder. If you're looking for the concept trash, you can find it by expanding the miscellany um, term. And then also by expanding trash, you'll notice another, a couple other uh, concepts like abandoned research equipment. And so if you select uh, abandoned research equipment, it'll take you to the same search result page that would be returned if you use the concept abandoned research equipment in the home page search bar. But now if you're looking for a specific animal or group, um, what you can do is dive deeper by looking at the marine organism concept uh, and go until you find your concept of interest, like, for example, tunicata. So if we expand tunicata, um, what you'll see or select this, um, this page will again take you to search results on the deep sea guide using the term tunicata. And using this browsing tool can really give you a different viewpoint on the concepts in the knowledge base, as well as another method to engage with the data. And this sort of browsing is a good way to stumble upon concepts or project ideas that you may not be aware of or even thought of. And so let's go back to the home page and um, let's enter a concept of interest in the search bar. For example, I'm a huge fan of giant larvation snot palaces. So I want to take a look at the deep sea guide results of the genus Bathycordius. And if I type that term in, you'll notice that there's a number of concepts that are listed. Um, and these are concepts that are shown to match in the knowledge base. And I can either enter Bathycordius to return matching results for all concepts that contain the word Bathycordius or dive deeper into the concept tree by selecting or typing additional terms. And if I use the higher level search term Bathycordius and hit search, what you'll see is a return of results uh, with five different options uh, that contain the word Bathycordius. And you can either select a result, but I'll also show you how you can navigate through these results using the knowledge base uh, taxonomy as a guide. So let's start with Bathycordius. And just look at this glorious snot palace, right? Um, I want to draw your attention to the representative images that you see in the top left 
um, the description and references in the bottom left, uh, the taxonomy in the top right, and as well as some of the media links in the bottom right. Um, if, if you wanna look at the representative images, all you have to do is click on um, these images to scroll through a number of them. And if you wanna um, see a larger image, you just click uh, on this link and it'll reveal a, a much bigger image. Um, on the bottom left, you'll notice fields for description, geographic information, additional information, and references. And you'll notice that three of these fields are not populated for this particular concept, but under references, you'll find links to things like the World Register of Marine Species or worms. And it's using these links, these external links that'll take you to other sites where you can find more information about the concept you are searching for. Um, so now back to our search results on the top right, you'll notice the familiar concept tree that shows the term in the knowledge base. And here you can see that the search term we used, Bathycordius, is a genus within the Oikopleuridae family. Um, so below Bathycordius, there are three species, Bathycordius caron, Bathycordius mcnetii, and Bathycordius stygius. And so there, and so you'll, um, to navigate, you can select something like Bathycordius caron, and you can see results that are related to that. You can also go back to uh, and navigate up the, the tree and look at Oikopleuridae. And again, if you want to return to the original genus or the original term that we were looking at, you can dive more deeper, uh, deeply into Bathycordinae, and then finally Bathycordius. So you can see how we can use the knowledge base in the top right to navigate around some of these concepts. But now finally, I wanna show you what's going on on the bottom right. Um, and so this is, these are media links um, that will give you more information. Uh, selecting the phylogenetic image gallery here will show you representative images of all the descendant concepts or concepts that are lower in the hierarchy in the knowledge base. And for the genus uh, Bathycordius, the descendant concepts are the three species of Bathycordius. And so this page allows you to get a high level glimpse of select images for a group of concepts related to your original search term. Now, another, um, another link I want to, to hit is annotated images. And so if you select this, uh, this will take you to a page of images that correspond to your original search term. Uh, in this case, images that correspond to Bathycordius, but then look at all these different stop palaces and, um, and what you'll see is that the results are really just a subset of the images that exist in the VARS database. And a few shown here are ones that are either tagged select or close up. And to view all the images that are associated with annotations in the VARS database, you would have to download those images using a separate VARS query tool, which I will explain and describe in another video. And to enlarge individual images here, just click on them like you see. And then finally, I wanna show you the data products page um, because this will take you to a page that breaks down a subset of VARS data by geographic region uh, that you can then look at. And it also tabulates the sightings of your search term or concept that have been documented by Ambari's uh, remotely operated vehicles. But first let's talk about geographic regions. Ambari has conducted oceanographic expeditions around the world and their ROV assets have been deployed all over as well. And you can refine the geographic region of your search by selecting this button here and scrolling through that list. Uh, you can define your search area to be as broad as globally like we've done here or constrain to just observations of a single place like Davidson Seamount. Since most of Ambari's expeditions occur in the greater Monterey Bay area, I personally tend to select this region, the greater Monterey Bay, uh, for, my, for my searches. And if you're not sure the region you're wanting to select, you can view a map of this region by hitting the um, map of this region link, ignore this warning dialog box, but you can scroll out and you'll notice that this black box indicates the geographic region of interest. Um, so let's go back. And again, you know, make sure your region of interest is selected. Um, you'll notice three different plots where the top plot shows the most complexity and the bottom plot shows the least uh, complexity. Let's start with the bottom plot. So this plot shows you the depth distribution of all of Ambari's ROV 
um, observations at Bathycordius that are constrained within the um, global geographic region. The vertical axis shows the depth here, and the horizontal axis shows the number of counts or observations of Bathycordius conducted by Ambari's ROVs. You can see here that the peak number of observations of Bathycordius conducted um, uh, occurs, you know, at more than 5,000 observations at roughly a depth of 225 meters. And then this uh, distribution tapers down pretty significantly or quickly below 400 meters. And from a potential project standpoint, it could be useful to compare these histograms between different species to understand the different environments these animals might live in. And so if you want to download this plot as an image, feel free to right click and select save image as and, and save the image. But if instead of downloading the image of the plot, you want to download the data that was used to generate the plot, you can go back to the data products page and select more information. And here, right click on the download data set uh, link to save the link as a text file. Um, and so what this will generate is a text file that can then be imported into your favorite data processing application like Excel, MATLAB, Python, or R. And if you want to download, download data with more granularity or details directly from the VARS database, you'll need to use the VARS query tool instead. So let's look at the, um, the second, this second one. Um, and the reason why um, these other two plots exist is that, you know, since researchers tend to visit and revisit the same depths in the water column, what can result in the database is a disproportionate number of observations at the same depth, which doesn't necessarily reflect the real distributions and the occurrences of animals observed. To address this bias, we can normalize the ROV data by ROV effort or divide the number of times the concept has been observed by the amount of time that is spent at a particular depth making observations with an ROV. This metric will reveal more realistic trends of animal distributions, and the middle and top plots show the observations of the concept Bathycordius using this normalization of ROV effort. And so this, this middle plot here, in the case of Bathycordius, you'll notice that the distribution after normalization hasn't really changed much. Uh, there are definitely concepts and instances where this is not the case. So it's worth paying attention to ROV effort when you look at these data. Uh, so let's go back to the, um, the data products page. And like the other plots, you can either download the image by right-clicking on the plot directly, or you can download the data used to generate the plot by downloading the text file uh, in the more information page. And finally, the top plot shows the depth distribution and time of year of observations of Pathocordius constrained to the geographic region that's normalized by ROV effort. And so the left vertical axis here again shows depth, um, but here the horizontal axis shows the day of year where one corresponds to January 1st and 365 corresponds to December 31st. The color bar that you see here on the right uh, where indicates uh, the effort normalized relative frequency, where the blue or pink regions and colors represent times of year where um, observations were relatively more uh, were relatively sorry infrequent versus warmer or redder colors where um, those observations were more frequent. And so then you can see that in the late summer, early fall, uh, roughly 230 to 280 days in the calendar year, the highest frequency of observations of Bathycordius occurred just shallower than 200 meters. And like the other plots, you can either download the image by right clicking and selecting save image as, or also going back and then selecting the more information page and then right clicking and save link as. Um, so again, you can download the link to the file as a text file, which can then be imported into your favorite data analysis application. Um, so I really hope that you know this short demo is helpful as you become more familiar with the data and concepts in the Deep Sea Guide. And so feel free to browse uh, through many of the different Deep Sea concepts besides giant larvations, not palaces. Enjoy your Deep Sea search. <laughs>